Hello YouTube, today I'll be making a video about the different types of recursion. So what is pure structural recursion, accumulative recursion, and generative recursion? So I'm going to write them down here. So we have pure structural recursion. We have accumulative recursion. We have generative recursion. And that's about it. And that's all we're going to cover right now. There's even more types of recursion, for example, mutual recursion. I will cover those in a later video. So let's start off with the idea of recursion. So the idea of recursion is you have a function that calls itself. So let me define a simple function. I'd say I have a function called uh, sum a b. Now, if I want to sum of a b, I can just add a plus b, right? So let me run this through. So now if I do sum 1, 2, this returns 3. OK, that's good. And recall that we I mentioned lists in a previous tutorial. So we can have a list of numbers, for example, 1, 2, 3. And now we have multiple numbers. So that's how we define a list. Or we could use the quote notation, which I didn't cover in the last video, but it does the same thing. So let's say I have a list of numbers, and I want to add a list of numbers. So one way is I could take sum and add more parameters. So it matches 3, and then I just do it like that. And since the plus operator is overloaded, I could just add more parameters. And now I could do sum 1, 2, 3, and get the sum of it. But what if I want this to work for any amount of lists? Well, in order to do that, I can actually just do a list. So I can accept a list. So let's say list of numbers. We call it list of n. So if we do the uh, contract, we say a list of numbers supports a list of num. And we would output from this, we would actually output a num, which is the sum. So we have a list of number, and now we need to add it. Now, we're reaching a problem now, because we're at the case where we have all these numbers, but how do we even add them? When we do the plus operator, how, how does this work? We can do first, second, third, and this is a terrible way of doing it, because if the size of the list, we do sum list 1, 2, it will give errors. Or if we do sum this 1, 2, 3, 4, this will give the wrong answer. So the way we would solve this is actually using recursion. Now recursion works on several concepts. But the most important concept to understand is base case. So let's first see, first thing we want to check is if this is already empty, we already know what the sum will be. Otherwise, we add the first number plus, and then we can add the sum of the rest of the number. Now I'm going to show you guys something really cool. So this works, and this will work. Ta-da! So the reason why it works is the following. So let's start with the base case. So this is the base case over here. The base case is a length of zero. Now, if the sum, if the if the um, list of numbers has nothing in it, then the sum will be zero because we have no numbers. Otherwise, we find we add the first number in the list, and then we add the rest of the list. So the idea of this is we're basically breaking this down into different subproblems. We start off with the first number in the list, and then we get the rest of the list through there. So we get the first number in the list, and we go to the rest. So if, if, if it's a list with one item, it takes the first item, and then it sums the rest. Now we recall this method sum again. And when we call sum, we get a list with one less item. So that one less item will actually might be empty. So if it's empty, we just simply add the first item, and then we append zero to it. It's a little bit confusing at first, but you have to visualize it. And imagine it's a mathematical function that might be easier to understand. But this is a completely separate thing. So if we were to trace the code, it would call sum with a list, go through con, skip because it's not empty, it will add it, and then the rest of the list, we will simply recall the same method, but with one less item at the beginning. It will add the second item, go to the rest, add the third item, go to the rest, fourth item, go to the rest, there's no fifth item because the list is empty, so it'll just add zero and it'll stop. Notice how here in the base case we do not call the method again. This is a very important fact we need to take into consideration. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was useful.
and uh, we'll continue discussing more. So this is an example of pure structural recursion because it is pure structural recursion as either the variable, the parameter, goes towards zero or it stays the same. And I'll discuss that more in later videos. This is all you need to know for now, the basics of recursion, the most important concept is base case, and we're always going towards the base case. So notice how we're doing rest. If we simply did list of numbers, it would recurse infinitely and we would never get anywhere. Because you're always adding the exact same number all the time. So yeah, I hope you guys found this somewhat useful. If you do not understand this, it will be complicated, but you have to spend some time playing around with it. There's a lot of different applications, a lot of different problems, so you can also imagine it as a tree if you're willing to think of it that way. So we can see here it's running forever, it's just keep on running. It'll just destroy my computer. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.